Today I'll be explaining the various packaging formats for applications that exist on Linux, and the differences between each one. So first off are your standard Linux packages. These are devs for Debian-based distributions, including Ubuntu, and RPMs for Red Hat based distributions, including Fedora. And then, of course, there is a different one for Arch and Arch-based distributions, but DEBs and RPMs are the most used ones. And these are installed through your distribution's package manager, and they're typically hosted and maintained by Linux distributions, though they can be installed from third-party sources. Now, this centrally maintained repository model has been a trusted way to install applications on Linux for a long time. Dependencies are shared across packages, which has the obvious advantage of saving disk space, but it can also be a major disadvantage in that it can cause what's known as dependency hell, where an application will need one version of a dependency, but another application will need another, and so they conflict. And if your distribution's package manager isn't smart enough, it could end up breaking the system if you aren't careful. But luckily nowadays, most distribution's package managers are designed smartly to avoid that. So if there's going to be a dependency conflict, it will just simply fail to install that package. And applications packaged as a standard Linux package generally follow your system theme. Now for the disadvantages of a standard Linux packages is that they are not sandboxed, meaning that anything your user has access to, that application has access to as well. And if you run that application as root, then it has access to absolutely everything on your system, which is why you don't want to run as root unless absolutely necessary. Well, I do love the convenience of these packages and the fact that they run completely natively on my system, like they're the quickest to launch, and they also follow my custom theming. These packages actually suck for developers because not only do they have to be packaged for each distribution, but also each version of each distribution. And that's why these packages are typically hosted and maintained by Linux distributions. And it should be noted that stable release distributions like Debian and Ubuntu don't tend to update their packages for already released versions of their distribution, except for bug fixes and security patches to avoid breaking things. And these major disadvantages of standard Linux packages are the idea behind flat packs. Now, one major advantage of flat packs is that they are universal Linux packages meaning that a developer only has to package an application once and it'll run on any distribution that has Flatpak installed. And these can be installed through graphical package managers or from the command line. And dependencies can be shared via runtimes or bundled with apps, which eliminates the problem of dependency hell. And these applications are sandboxed, meaning that, at least in theory, Flatpak applications only have access to what they need to. Now, in practice, this isn't always implemented on every application, but it's still better than nothing. Now, because a lot of dependencies are bundled with apps, flat packs will use more disk space overall compared to your standard Linux packages. And they are also slower to launch than standard Linux packages, though not as bad as snaps, which I'll get into in a minute. Flat pack applications, for the most part, don't follow your system theme. And flat pack focuses only on graphical applications, no command line apps, or any way to install individual dependencies. And now we get into snaps, which is 
another universal Linux packaging format developed by Canonical. A developer just has to package their application once, and it'll run on any distribution with SnapD installed. And again, these can be installed through graphical package managers or through the command line. Now, snaps are contained within a .snap file and mounted as their own file system, which is the reason why snaps will actually create a lot of loop devices, one for each individual snap, which some people do get pretty pissed about this. And dependencies are bundled with apps. So snaps will use more disk space overall compared to standard Linux packages. Snaps are also sandboxed. So that does also have the concept of applications only have access to what they need to, at least in theory. Now snaps are the controversial packaging format because for one thing, they're slower to launch than standard Linux packages or even flat packs and they do not follow your system theme. And this third one is actually a big one in that although the SnapD client is open source, the server side is not, meaning that there is only one Snap store. Now one advantage with snaps over flat packs is that unlike Flatpak, which only offers graphical applications, Snap not only offers graphical desktop applications, but also command line and server applications. Like for example, you could get the Nextcloud Snap on your Linux server and just have a fully functional Nextcloud install in basically a matter of minutes with basically no tinkering required on your part. And now we come to app images, which is another universal Linux packaging format. These will run on any Linux distribution with Fuse installed, though for some reason Ubuntu 22.04 actually broke support for app images. But it's actually a very easy fix if you're on Ubuntu 22.04 or later. Just open up a terminal and run sudo apt install libfuse2. Now, a major difference with app images from the other Linux packaging formats I mentioned is that app images are not installed in your system, but run from .app image files downloaded from the internet. And the application is contained within the .app image file. And dependencies are bundled with apps, so app images will naturally use more disk space overall. And they do not implement sandboxing, unlike the other two universal Linux packaging formats. They are slower to launch, compared to standard Linux packages. They do not follow your system theme. App images are not included in your desktop environment's application menu. And the biggest disadvantage with app images is that you have to trust whoever packaged the application. And now we move on to the AUR, or the Arch user repository. And it's available on Arch and its derivatives, like Manjaro. Packages can be installed graphically, or through the command line. And the AUR is contributed to by Arch Linux users, hence the name Arch User Repository. Now what makes the AUR unique is that it doesn't offer pre-built binary packages, but rather applications come as source packages with scripts which build the application on your system from source and install any dependencies that are needed by that application. And the reason why people love the AUR is that you can find pretty much anything on here, which comes from its community model. Now, one major downside to the AUR is that because it's contributed to by Arch Linux users, you have to trust whoever packaged the application. Though submissions are reviewed by trusted contributors to the AUR project. And also, the AUR will not prevent dependency conflicts with other packages that you may have installed on your system. And overall, it pretty much expects you to know what you're doing. You should be reading the build script and seeing what it's doing to your system and also what dependencies 
it's installing. It's not exactly as simple as just clicking install and expecting it to work. And now we get into other Linux packaging formats that are not as common. Occasionally, you will run into that situation where you have to build a package from source or install it via an executable, similar to the way you would on Windows. Note, this is not to be confused with the .exe files, which only run on Windows, unless of course you've installed Wine. Like, I'm talking about Linux executables, like .run or .bundle files. Now, unfortunately, there isn't really a universal way to install these, so hopefully that package comes with some good instructions. And luckily, this isn't very common, especially in this day and age, which is a good thing because installing applications this way on Linux is not as easy or as clean as it is on Windows, and applications installed this way are much harder to remove should you decide that you no longer need them on your system. Now, personally, I prefer to install a standard Linux package from my distribution's official repository, but if it's not there, I'll look for it on Flathub, which is Flatpak's main central repository, or the Snap Store. Doesn't really matter to me, but I prefer Flatpaks. If it's not there either, then I would install a deb from the developer's website, assuming of course I trust the developer. And that's it for this video. Be sure to give it a like if you liked it, dislike if you disliked it, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff, and see you next time.